So, um, I just thought I'd turn the camera this week so you can see me for a little bit, and I'm going to switch. I'm going to have a look at the candles. Mm. Using our prayers this morning, continuing through book Holy Wells, A Pilgrim's Prayer, Companion and Guide by Brendan O'Malley. That's where I'm getting my prayers from this morning. Okay. Make a start. Lord Jesus Christ, the world's true Son, ever rising, never setting, whose life giving warmth engenders, preserves, nourishes and gladdens all things in heaven on earth. Shine in my soul, I pray. Scatter the night of sin and the clouds of error. Blaze within me that I may go my way without stumbling, taking no part in the shameful deeds of those who walk in the dark. But all my long, but all my lifelong walking as one native to the light. Amen. So, just going to flip my camera around. If I can do it seamlessly. There we go. So we have our setup a little bit different today. As you can see, I've got my beautiful beeswax Dalit candle from the cathedral shop, and it smells very nice. Um, I also burn, if anyone knows me here, I also burn a lot of incense, and I have them like in a jar, and they're like pick and mix, so I don't know what I'm getting, and this one's really, really sweet. Which is lovely. Okay, so as always, feel free to type any comments and any prayer requests, anything that we can pray together for. And I will kind of lead us in lighting our candles. If you do have candles at home, you're very welcome to light them together. It's however you feel comfortable. As I say, it seems to be a, seems to have been a very long week this week with a lot of things going on, positive and negative. I'd like to highlight this first candle for the team at St Luke in the City. And um, Lewis, in particular, who gets um, licensed on tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow Sunday. Tomorrow, um, which is really great. I have a wonderful introduction to Lewis earlier on in the week. So I'd like to pray for his ministry, his enthusiasm and excitement of what he wants to bring to St. Luke in the city and we look forward to welcoming him in, albeit electronically for now. The hard work behind the scenes of churches up and down the country preparing to open for private prayer. And all those clergy and members of staff that are peddling really fast under the water, trying to make that happen as safely as we can. Oh, 
Thanks to light a candle for our students, communities, for the work that's going on in looking and how we're going to welcome them in the new academic year, with all excitement, opportunities, and all of that anxiety with our new students, with our academic staff, the uncertainties at different universities and what teaching is going to look like. Just offer those anxieties up to the Lord. I'd like to light a candle for the two instances this week of fatal stabbings in Reading and in Glasgow. Reading in particular, with being associated with the LGBT community, perhaps a heat crime, a time of deep sensitivity, a time of Pride Month. I'd like to pray for the victims' families and for the communities affected. Same with the communities in Glasgow, the extreme behaviour that we've seen. May the killers be brought to justice. May they rest in peace. I just mentioned that, but I will mention it again about our Pride Month. What would have been celebrating in London today, in particular, for those people from the LGBT communities who are missing out on that march, that celebration, that visibility for those who may not feel safe with their lockdown, for those who may not feel as though they can be who they are in their place of lockdown, maybe with families who do not include them. Just pray for their strength. We look at this time together and we look to our open table community, similar. We pray for all those affected by the coronavirus. Those who have died this week, those who are in anticipation and visiting those who are sick. Those families affected by loss, by grief, whether that be coronavirus or otherwise. Pray for our NHS workers. Pray for our chaplains working in the hospital. We pray for strength to visit those who are sick. And pray around that anxiety that you know, going into a situation and meeting someone they know has the virus. Amen, Yvonne. Pray for the 
jobs market at the moment. Those are playing though. So, trying to be sensible, and I'll light all those candles, and then we'll we'll have a pray. That one doesn't like me. Never mind. Pray for our okay for the staff who yeah, are maybe going back to work this week in different areas, different sectors. Pray for Yvonne who's Applying for jobs. Just pray for that excitement and anticipation. I'd like to pray also for the scenes this week around Liverpool. Um, so I understand the excitement and the community and the culture of football, um, scenes of mass gatherings and mass celebrations. Um, just like to pray for safety to those involved with that. Just hope that people are being sensible with their celebrations at this time of lockdown. Hello, I do appreciate it. It's an exciting historic time for those who follow the football. I'd like to pray for, like we did a few weeks ago, for the festival season. Particularly the, the hype and the excitement and enthusiasm around Glastonbury Festival. And that not going ahead this year and... And also... Um, those businesses that I would have lost out. That I would have lost income for Water Aid, Greenpeace and Oxfam who are the partner charities that have lost a significant amount of donations because of the cancellation of the festival and I think um, reflecting on this this morning um, as you know from last week me rattling on about Glastonbury Festival and festival season and being involved with things over the summer which are all now cancelled. Take a moment to really think about the festival experience and what that means. And primarily it is living in a tent with no access to proper toilets, proper sanitation, you know, having to walk a fair bit to get clean water. And I think if we actually look at our experience, the people do that for a novelty over a weekend. Camping is a novelty and you don't, you're in a tent and you don't particularly, it's not a particularly safe structure. And I think that's really give us an insight to those people who start first and foremost in Liverpool that live in tents. You see the homeless community who are set up pitched in tents. And it's that festival experience we get a glimpse of that vulnerability. Certainly. 
The same with our refugee communities. And it really does make us think we sit in our privilege. And then over the summer we go and stay in a tent in a field. To day to day. So I'd just like to offer those people who are living in that situation to God. And we see a glimpse of that vulnerability and that kind of difficulty that must be facing, but it's really quite eye opening as an experience. Knowing full well that we're able to come home to our comforts eventually. And some people don't have that security. This has got me thinking this morning. We bring our prayer, spoken and unspoken, across different parts of the country, and we come together electronically to pray, to sit, to be together as a community. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus. Jesus Christ. Amen. Marvellous. So I'm going to leave my camera there to focus on the flames, which I think is quite nice for what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to read. proverb and then we're going to go into a meditation exercise from my book on holy wills reflecting on love which is a lovely thing to reflect on just take a moment Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Find everything in prayer, which is fragrance and food, a home, a shield. A tonic. Recall the reasons of your prayer. The moments of despair, the days of glad thanksgiving, the times of stillness, presence, adoration. Love God, the Creator. Love the cosmic Christ. Remain in love. Recapture and relive the times that you felt loved. Cared for and treasured. And see yourself going out in love. To friends. To those in need and to every living creature. Obtain peace and healing from your roots in nature. Recall what happens when you are in harmony with the earth and sky, with rocks, sea, wind, 
birds, animals, the creatures of the sea, and nature's many moods, and the seasons of the year. We seek the source of refreshment, sustenance, and healing that our spirit, like our bodies, are constantly in need of. We seek to be made whole in solitude and silence. So now we seek to silence word and thought by being conscious of sounds around us or the sensation of the body. of the breathing we are energized by love Thank you very much for joining morning prayer with me today. Just flip this round again. <clears throat> Thank you very much for joining. I really hope you have a lovely week. So tomorrow we have communion at 10 with Miranda. And then we have an evening we are celebrating Lewis's arrival. Hey. Um have a lovely week. I hope the weather is nice for you, however you're spending your day. Okay, thanks. Oh, bye. Have a good week. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.